God wants us to get a hold of what the gospel is. And the gospel is, is a message that a king was born and we're proclaiming the good news of the reign of Jesus. That's the kingdom of God. We're not proclaiming the reign of Caesar. We're not proclaiming the reign of America. Come on, somebody. We're not proclaiming the reign of another nation. We're proclaiming the reign of the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And so many times we're just like the Pharisees and we're asking, Lord, oh, when, when it, how's your kingdom going to come? Jesus like, you can't see it with your naked eye. The kingdom of God does not come by enforcing laws, but by enduring love. The kingdom of God does not come by the zeal of the sword, but by the passion of servanthood. We got to stop focusing on the implementation of some religious sinful management method upon our churches and cultures in general and start focusing on the revolution of the heart that happens by the love of God one life at a time. That's the kingdom. So let me talk about what the kingdom of God is. You know what the kingdom of God is? What was Jesus saying in your midst? Can I just tell you what I believe what he was saying when he said the kingdom of God is in your midst? He was saying who's standing in front of you. When we manifest Jesus, we manifest the kingdom of God. You can't separate, hear me, the kingdom of God from the heart of the king. When we do that, we move away from the heart of the king. So Jesus is saying the kingdom of God is in your midst. Guess who's in their midst? Jesus is in their midst. The corporate body of believers is the living expression and DNA of Jesus. And that's how he wanted to do it. And he calls us. This is the mystery that we see. The apostle Paul calls us the body of Christ. So if we want to manifest the kingdom, we should start manifesting Jesus. He says the kingdom of God's in your midst, not within you. That's not a good translation. It's in your midst. So when you manifest Jesus, and listen, we can't manifest Jesus Alone, we've got to manifest who he is together. We need each other. We need unity. We need to be one. 1 Corinthians 4.20, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Come on. I love what the apostle Paul, you know, can I just give you the, the Zachary David Wexler translation or paraphrase real quick? Yeah. The kingdom of God is not a matter of politics, but of power. Are you ready? Look at the person next to you and say, are you ready? ready? Don't rely on some politician's policy. Rather, be Jesus by loving constantly. It's to do. Change does not start in the White House before it starts in your house. But laws are not going to change the world. Love is going to change the world one heart at a time. Now, I believe in, in, in good laws. I believe in good leaders. But listen, change doesn't start in the White House. It, change, it starts in your house. Now, these kind of messages, people leave the church over this kind of stuff. Because it, it's so, oh, oh, don't you dare take away my American flag. I love America. And I'm so glad I'm in this country. Come on, I believe in some of the principles it was founded on. But I am loyal to the cross. I am loyal to Jesus long before I'm loyal and pleading allegiance to a flag. Why is it in American Christianity everybody knows oh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. But many children don't know the Apostles' Creed. Or the Sermon on the Mount, or the Beatitudes, or how we're called not just to love our neighbor, but love our enemies. Jesus, have mercy. We want to manifest the kingdom. It's not over here, it's not over there, it's in your midst. Jesus is the manifestation of the kingdom of God. You can't separate the heart of the king and his reign as king. It's the same way we think, you know, about politics and, and we want, we want some new law or we want some new legislation. We want to legislate our faith and, you know, you can't take the Bible out of schools. That's not what's going to change the world. You know what we need? We need some Holy Ghost filled students up in there starting Bible studies and getting people filled with the Holy Spirit in the bathrooms. You don't need the 10 commandments on the walls of your school in order to have revival. What you need is people being Jesus so they can 
can become revival. Now, do I think that would help? Maybe, but you know what? I don't really care. I just want to see a love revolution. I want to see people be Jesus. I want to see the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is not observable. The kingdom of God doesn't come by us voting for some dude or girl or whoever. It comes by being Jesus and loving the broken. And it comes through a humble love. It comes through a love that looks like Jesus, that we're willing to serve. We're not just going to talk about the problem, but be the solution. We're not going to just talk about abortion, but we're going to start homes for teenage pregnant moms. Come on. And I was hesitant about giving this message. I usually don't give messages based upon things that are happening in the time. But I felt like this is, this is a prophetic word. And th- this is reality, church. Like, we've, we've got to get this. And listen, I don't care if you're a libertarian, Republican, Democrat. None of that matters to me. And I, you know what? I'm going to just say this. I love that our house is full of all. Because we're not loyal to political party. Come on. And, and, and Jesus is not a white Republican. And, and the, the mixture of the powers that be in the kingdom of God. Listen to my heart this morning. We have to understand that in order to manifest the kingdom, we've got to know what the kingdom is and what the kingdom looks like. And sometimes it's okay to say this. I'm not sure what it looks like, but I want to know. You know, that was my wife and I. That's what we said when we first started the church. I don't know what real church looks like, but I want to know. I don't know what real fellowship looks like because sometimes I'm not real and it's exhausting when I'm not real. If you're trying to be somebody else, it's so exhausting. If you're tired, just be yourself. And I said, honey, let's have real fellowship. Let's let the walls down. Let's have fierce conversations. Well, don't talk about religious and poli- religion and politics. <laughs> No, let's talk about, let's answer the tough questions. This is why we have the School of Theology and Supernatural Living. We answer the tough questions. And I truly believe if we really want to change the world, then let's follow the one who already changed the world. So here's what I'm saying is, God, separate the two. Give us discernment. We want good people in office. You'll never hear me endorse a politician. Because I'm not going to enforce my ideals and what I believe on anybody else. Nor will I mix the pulpit with politics. Because I think it's what the church needs to get away from. Not, and they, the church should be involved. We want godly people. Because listen, when a godly person's in office and they manifest Jesus, they're manifesting the kingdom. But not through laws and legislation, through life and community. We want godly people in office. We want, but we, we're not voting in the Messiah, guys. Jesus is the hope of the world. Not some politician. And so here's what I'm saying. May we humble ourselves. And may we orient our hearts at the humility of the love of God. So that we can become Jesus. Your orientation determines your manifestation. If you're oriented at the zeal of the sword, then you're going to manifest the zeal of the sword. But if you're oriented at the passion of servanthood, you're going to manifest what being a servant really is. And the world needs Jesus, not a politician. The world needs Christians to rise up and become the body. Jesus even said this in John 3, He didn't say, unless you're born again, you can't enter the kingdom of God. He didn't say that. He said, you can't see the kingdom of God. Now, is it possible that Christians, you ready? I'm going to drop a bomb on you. Christians have been looking with their naked eye at what the kingdom is, but they're missing it because it's not observable with the naked eye. Instead of looking at and seeing what the kingdom of is with their born again hearts. Jesus said, unless you're born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. Read it, John 3. What? It doesn't say unless you're born again, you can't go to heaven. That's our whole method, just throws our whole method out the window, right? I believe in the born again experience. I believe in water baptism. I believe in opening your heart to God. I believe in, but listen, he says, if you, you can't even see the kingdom. So maybe... 
we're looking at observable things and saying kingdom when really Jesus is like, no, 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 no. When you know you're my son, when you, you're born of God, when you're born from above and you see with those eyes, then you can see what the kingdom really is. And that's what I implore to you today is that we have convoluted the mixture of empire and God's kingdom and they are not the same thing. God, give us your heart. Jesus, give us your heart. This is an easy message. It's a lot easier to preach messages that fill pews, but I'd rather see people change than fill pews. Please don't get me wrong. I believe that we should vote and be involved, but that shouldn't be our number one priority. Change doesn't start in the White House. It starts in our house. God, have mercy. We've convoluted the kingdom with the empires. The thing you came to turn upside down, we've made right side up and made it preeminent over everything else. Matter of fact, some Christians are shunned if they don't vote or shunned if they're not Republican or shunned if they're not this or that. How about we just be Jesus? How about we get back to following the one who changed the world so we can be world changers? And do it with humble love.